Good evening and welcome to Bud Light Hog Talk right here at District Bar and Grill. I'm Mike Peck and uh, we got a great show for you here tonight. First show of 2013 and of course we welcome everybody here at District and everybody tuning in on 23-2 Antenna TV. Great show tonight. We have Ice Hogs head coach Ted Dent, also Ice Hogs forward Philippe Paradis and our first guest Ice Hogs winger Ben Smith. Nice round of applause for Ben Smith winger for your Rockford Ice Hogs. Thank you. For up uh, first tonight. I know. Thank you, Teddy. Yeah, yeah, Teddy. Uh, switching the order up, which is it's always good to mix things up a little bit. And uh, well, Smitty, uh, we'll, we'll kind of dive into uh, you know the, uh, the 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 season and whatnot. But of course, the elephant in the room is uh, the uh, the darn lockout is finally over with. And uh, if anything, it's probably been more of a distraction for everybody. Um, and it's got to feel uh, just good uh, for for you as a player to to get this over with. And uh, and move move along, right? Yeah, everyone's excited just to move forward. That's the, that's the biggest thing. Uh, obviously, the process took longer than everyone had hoped, but uh, it, the, the the hockey community is moving forward, and that's uh, kind of the way we're looking at it. And um, it's a pretty uncertain time for everybody right now. Uh, just come watch practice today. It was a little uncertain <laughs> what what was going on, but um, uh, it, it's exciting and uh, everyone's moving forward. Did it turn back to, when I say reality, kind of back to what it was like your first two years in pro hockey, almost at a snap of a finger when you showed up at the rink today, just because normal American Hockey League hockey, when the NHL is playing, which technically it isn't yet because they have to uh, vote on it tomorrow, I guess, the owners, but uh, they'd be foolish not to. But anyways, a normal season... Anybody can be going up at any time, and that's kind of, I'm sure, what the feeling was today when he walked in the, in the, in the locker room. Yeah, it was, a, it was definitely unique for this season, seeing guys come and go. We haven't had that at all, so um, it was definitely interesting, uh, and obviously we'll see more of that as we go on here, but um, it's kind of back to the, to the routine, uh, the challenges for us players, getting used to the guys coming and going, and obviously for the coaching staff, it's difficult. You never know who's going to be in, in in the lineup on a given night, so uh, we're back to the regular, you know, AHL routine. Yeah, it, it's an it's an interesting makeup for sure, and I, I'm sure as a player, it can be easy to to get complacent, you know, lockout or no lockout. You know, kind of talk about that. You know, you know, everyone's dream is to make it to the NHL that's playing in the American Hockey League, and it, you get here and you kind of get settled and you get comfortable. Is it hard not to get complacent as a as a hockey player? That's definitely the challenge. It's uh, the consistency. Everyone talks about consistency, but uh, that's really what it is. Uh, every day we go to the rink, we pretty much do the same thing, the same routine, the same warm up, and uh, it's it's doing that at your very best every day, and that's the challenge. And if uh, and you see the guys that have success, and, and, and you watch it for me, especially I, I I watch the guys. They come to the rink every day with energy, with passion, and uh, they're not complacent and they're consistent every day. Now you uh, you're coming off of a, a situation where you were you were dinged up pretty good last year. You you started the season unfortunately on the injured reserve. You ended the season uh, a bit a bit early as well. Kind of talk about your recovery. You had uh, what was it two surgeries uh, before the season needed, even ended last year that ended your season. Uh, just kind of talk about that process of of battling through injury and and trying to get back to full strength there. Yeah the the hip and the I guess hernia, you would, you'd you call it ab injury. It's just another challenge of, you know, everyone has challenges and obstacles, uh, you know, while they're trying to get where they're, uh, where they want to go. So that's the way I've, I've looked at it all along. It was something that kind of held me back a little bit, but uh, it's an obstacle that I've worked hard every day since then to move forward. And um, I'm just hoping every day that I, I can continue to do that and that it, at some point, it'll pay off. And uh, Kate Munson from uh, the communication staff actually uh, put together a pretty nice article on you that'll probably go up on icehogs.com here this week. And I know you went through a lot of stuff, so I'm not going to rehash that. I don't, I don't want to ruin the surprise for everybody in the, uh, in the article. But you did a great job covering it. Uh, and it just any time that you're, you're injured, and especially here, I'm sure there's that sense of, you know, your opportunity, maybe not being missed, but, you know, is there that sense of, oh, you know, now that you're, you're falling behind maybe where you want to be as a, as a prospect? I guess it, there was a little bit of that, and um, I, there were a lot of guys at the end of last year that went up to Chicago mm -hmm. and, and had a lot of success, which is great because, uh, you know, 
we take pride in what we did together last year. We we grew as a group, and it was great to see those guys go go up and do well. Uh, at, at the same time, you you know, my my personal goal was to was to be up there. So, um, you know, you want to be at the very highest level, and uh, it, it did at at times. It was a little frustrating because I um, I I I want to be there. Yeah. So. Um, it's it's just something that I couldn't control. That's that's for me. That's the biggest thing. I was hurt. I couldn't do any, anything about it, and uh, all I could do was work my way back to being 100 percent and uh, come in ready for this season. And obviously, the decision to shut it down a little bit early was to be ready for the start of this season, right? Yeah, there was the risk that you know if I'd had any um, setbacks that I wouldn't have been ready for uh, what was supposed to be training camp this year. Um, so that was the reason why we, we had it done in March. You know, and it's interesting because, you know, you, you, you roll the dice and let's say even everything in the summer goes according to plan from, you know, the, the operation to the recovery to the rehab, but you're still starting off behind. And, you know, for me, the, my biggest concern about the way things are going to shake out now in the National Hockey League is, you know, there's guys that they've been skating, but they're going to be going, you know, competing against guys who have been playing hockey and are in midseason form. So... Taking your situation into context, if you had waited and still everything worked out and you don't come into training camp where you normally are, you still, you still run the risk of maybe getting a little bit dinged up, you know, I mean, hamstrings, groins, whatever it might be. And I hate to say it, but I think that's probably going to be one of the biggest issues here with, with this whole thing kind of coming to a close up in the NHL. Yeah, it's tough. And I mean, the guys, I mean, we've played 35 games already. That's half a season. That's, that, a, that's a full college yeah, season, that's right? that's huge. So... For the guys that have been playing, they've been playing in Europe or wherever. They have a huge advantage to the guys that have been kind of sitting around waiting, with their summer tra- or their fall training, not really sure sure when to peak and when to kind of t- uh, tone it down a little bit. So it's that'll do a definitely be a challenge for some guys. Now, guys like me that sit behind the microphone and don't actually play the game, I always say you can't compare practice and, and simulating a game in practice and putting it in this situation of all of a sudden these guys are going to go into game situations with, you know, a week of training camp. How difficult is that to, to make that transition? Even, you know, in a normal year when you go from summer training into training camp, how difficult is it to, to, to kind of flip that light switch? I think we saw that with our team this year. We, we didn't have an NHL training camp, so we pretty much had one week until our, our, our first game, and, and we were kind of slow to, to come out of the gates a little bit there the first three or four games. So uh, I think you'll see a little bit of that with, with some teams, with some guys that, that haven't been playing. This is Bud Light Hog Talk. We're hanging out here with Ice Hogs winger Ben Smith. Uh, we do this just about every Monday night here at District Barn Grill. That's where we're at tonight. You can watch the re-airing of uh, Hog Talk every Tuesday from 7 to 8 p.m. Next week, we're actually at Onyx, but we'll talk about that here in a little bit. And, uh, well, you know, this, uh, this uh, Ice Hogs Club has been pretty streaky this year. Uh, there's been seven different streaks of three games or more, and we're only, what, what, are, you, what are you, 35, is that word? 35, 35, 36 games into the season? I mean, if you think about that, you know, three times seven, that's 21 of the 35 games have been in one of those streaks. And I think two of those have been four-game winning streaks or losing streaks, so... It's been a lot of feast and famine so far uh, this season for the team. Yeah, it's obviously something you want to avoid. Um, well, it's winning, consistent, yeah, right? <laughs> it's consistently inconsistent. Um, but winning four, th- three and four games is something that we're excited about. It's the losing the three or four games in a row that obviously needs to be uh, changed because, uh, you know, when you lose three, win three, win four, lo- it's – it doesn't get you anywhere. It, it, it leaves you with a 500 record, and it probably doesn't get you in the playoffs, which is our goal. So um, that needs to be addressed within the room, and hopefully we can work on that consistency. This is your uh, third season of, of pro hockey. Uh, you played the tail end of uh, which would have been your senior – it was your senior year in, in school. Uh, you played a couple weeks here in Rockford. But talk about how much you've learned playing the pro game here over the last couple of years and how much your game has maybe changed compared to when uh, you were at Boston College. Yeah, well, playing more games helps a lot. Uh, and playing in college, you only play 40, you know, 35, 40 games a year. So um, learning from the older guys is, is, is important. Guys like Jeff Tafe, Garnet X will be the guys that have been here the last few years. Mm-hmm. E- even this year, from uh, Marty St. Pierre and and uh, Brett Lebda, Wade Brookbank, you watch them and you and you know it it, it always helps 
trying to figure out your own routine, uh, the, how you can get up for every game, which is obviously a challenge being consistent. So um, I, my game, I think what, what I try and do is, is I just play to my strengths. And if I prepare well, which I feel like I do most games, if I try to play to my strength, I, uh, I, you know, sometimes I have some success. You bring up Wade Brookbank. I think he might be one of the most influential under-the-radar guys that this organization's ever had. You know, of course, he, he, people are going to look, oh, he's played 15, 16 games. You know, you look at his points, whatever. It's not what Wade Brookbank's necessarily here for. Talk about a, a guy like that and what he brings to, to a, a team, and especially a team like this. And, you know, every year the team's going to be young. That's just the nature of the American Hockey League. But what does he bring to the, to the locker room? It's not really his play on the ice. It's not really what he says. It's more so his presence. And I think everyone on the team would say the same thing, that just when Wade Brookbank is around, it, it, it's something is, is special, something's there. He's, a, he's an ultimate team person. I think if you ask anybody that Wade, Wade Brookbank would be there for any of us uh, if we needed him. So having him around has been great. It's been, for me, uh, three years, parts of three different years yeah. here. So it's definitely been uh, good for me to know him. Also gives good fantasy baseball advice. I found that out last year on a flight back from somewhere right before a fantasy baseball draft. So there's some input now. Everyone's going to be going to him, you know, soliciting that, that, that advice, you know? Yeah. <laughs> ben Smith is our guest here. It's Bud Light Hog Talk. We're out here at District Bar and Grill. And, you know, uh, the, the, the most recent set of games for the Ice Hogs, uh, unfortunately last week, three road games, three losses, and uh, they, they were all close. And it's, it's kind of interesting because you look at the games and – all three of them were, were, were different fields, but they weren't terrible games. It, you know, they, they just weren't good enough to win. And easy to, to, to see why, for example, in Hamilton on Friday night, I mean, uh, from the blue line into the offensive zone, it was very good. From the blue line in the offensive zone back to the, uh, the defensive zone, not very good. But all in all, you guys were still in, in that hockey game, and same could be said for the other two. Yeah, I mean, and for us, it's all about sticking to our systems and being consistent with our systems. Um, as you said, we weren't very consistent in those games. Sometimes, the, you know, the offense was going and the, we were, you know, giving guys breakaways left and right. And sometimes we were playing well defensively and we couldn't uh, bear down in, in the offensive zone. So, um, as I said, it, when we stick to our structure, when we stick to what we do well, we have success. And uh, as we've seen with these, you know, losing streaks, when we g get away from what we do well, we end up uh, struggling. Now, Saturday's game in Toronto was on national TV in Canada on, on Sportsnet, which is, I guess, kind of like a, a knockoff of, of ESPN up in, in Canada. You've played in big games throughout your career, whether it's in Chicago or Boston College, national championship games, Stanley Cup playoff games. But down here in the American Hockey League, uh, the Wolves televisor games, obviously, you know, with the, the full-fledged production. But... Most of the games here, it, it, they're all very cookie cutter. They're very standard. You go to a game like the, the game on Saturday, it, it's an afternoon game. There's two-minute timeouts in the game. It, it's just a little bit different structure. Does that mess with your routine at all uh, when, when you're playing? Uh, not, re not really. The one thing was playing a Saturday afternoon game after playing a Friday night game. That mm -hmm. doesn't happen very often. I think we've done it one more time or one time earlier the first weekend of the year against yep. Chicago. But... Um, it was, it was a quick turnaround, and it was a great atmosphere up in Toronto at the Rico. Yep, Rico, yep. And, um, Record crowd on Saturday. Yeah, it was, a, it was a great crowd, and it's a really talented team. As you can see, they're at the top of the conference. But, um, yeah, it, it, it was definitely a special game. You know, one of the most exciting games we played this year, just to be up for with a big crowd and obviously knowing that it was broadcast mm -hmm. nationally in, in Canada. You know, it's funny you bring up the afternoon thing because I was listening to some sports talk radio today and they were talking about the national championship football game tonight between Notre Dame and, and Alabama. And they were talking about how a night game has kind of, you know, it might mess with the players a little bit because they're used to playing Saturday afternoon. Especially Notre Dame. They have yep. that NBC slot at 3, 3 o'clock, right? Yeah. Every, every game. So they said how, how much it changes the routine. And one of the guys that was talking was saying that, you know, he didn't like night games when he was playing football. And it's kind of the opposite with hockey. So it really goes to show how athletes are creatures of habit. Yeah. I mean, you get in, in, a, in a routine, in a rhythm where you take a nap from 2 to 3 and then you wake up at 4, but you're on, go to the rink. And 
all the times kind of are the same. But then all of a sudden you start playing these 7.30 games or 2 o'clock or 11 a.m. like we do, or maybe we play a, a, a 1 o'clock game. Right. Here. So uh, it throws you off a little bit, but at the same time, it's, it's part of being a pro, uh, adapting to your situation, not kind of freaking out when everything's not perfect. So. Now, I've heard the concept, you know, with, with teams that like to play in the afternoon or that maybe not like to, but that's what they're scheduled. You get up, you eat breakfast, you go to the, to the arena, you play the game. Compared to the night game where you get up, you go to the arena, you do the morning skate, you eat lunch, you take the nap, you get up again, you go back to the arena. I mean, there's a lot more intangibles in the middle there. Uh, but again, it's habit, but would it maybe be easier to be on that routine if it was a one o'clock game and you... You just got up, you did your thing in the morning, and you went into the rink and, and got on the ice and started playing? Yeah, especially after you've played the day before. That's usually, you know, your your body's kind of used to getting bumped around a little bit from the night before, and you're still kind of mentally in that mindset that, uh, you know, you're playing games. But the one good thing for the for the night games is you have the full day to get your mind right, to get your mind into playing hockey and ready for the game situation. So, you know... It is what it is. We play mostly night games, but you have to be to be prepared for both, and that's you know that's just the way it is. Got to be flexible, right? Exactly. All right. Well, Smitty, great job, and uh, keep up the great work. By the way, we haven't even talked about the fact. I got to bring this up before we let you go because I've talked to you about this before. You've, I think, I jinxed you. By the way, you've scored about five straight goals by actually shooting the puck in the net. Now, uh, I, you're unbelievable in front doing those redirects. I know you guys work on it in practice all the time, but just kind of talk about that art. It's, I'm not going to say it's a lost art, but I just don't think guys sacrifice as much as maybe what they used to in front of the goal, and it's something that you do very well. Thank you. Um, yeah, over the course of my career, I've realized I'm not really a guy that's going to skate through three players and toe drag around and, and, and you know. The dangle a, guy, yeah, right? score a, a top <laughs> corner goal. So uh, getting to the net has been a huge part of my game. I, I mentioned it before that, if I prepare to play my game, do what I do well, then I usually have success. So getting to the front of the net, getting in front of the goalie and, you know, block, um, tipping or screening, that's, you know, that's how you score goals. And um, it's something since I've become a pro that I've, that I've tried to work hard at, uh, at getting better at. Well, Smitty, keep it up. And uh, I can say this again, uh, just keep working hard and hopefully we don't have to do this here anymore under these circumstances. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, that's Ben Smith. Nice round of applause for Ben Smith. Forward for your Rockford Ice Sox. Thank you. All right, we're going to take a quick timeout. When we return, Philippe Parody will be our next guest. It's Bud Light Hog Talk right here at District Barn Grill on 23-2 Antenna TV.